Him dangerous. <laughs> His difficulty is the speed factor, I think. The style of play perhaps does not take advantage of his talent. No, well run by him. Look at this. Eating it. Petrushka got in the way on the touch pass, but Griggs will follow. And it's controlled to Loyola Marymount and Terrell Lowry. Nice bounce pass on the break. Well, they know how to fill the lanes. It's uh, the defensive end that is the problem. Chris Knight gets his first hoop. Loyola Marymount leads it by two. Singleton's amazing. He can play so many spots on the floor for Dale Brown. Excellent passer. O'Neal baseline. Velvet. 4-4 the score, and Holt will counter. That's a break. They shoot it before they get it. Well, you've heard of the run and shoot in football. This is the shoot and run in basketball that Loyola Marymount employs. O'Neal right over Petruska. Good offensive move before the entry. I thought he may have held off, though. Lowry forces one up against O'Neal. Kept alive by Lowry. An outstanding reverse lay-in. Well, they'll keep coming. I saw them in Maui. They're club. They still feel they can do the things they did last year, and I'm sure some decisions will be made the next month or so as they get into their league play. Anston. Singleton trying to follow. Can't. And it's run down by Chris Knight. Two on one for Lowry and Holt. He'll trigger the three. Yeah, he's a pretty good offensive player. I, I saw against UCLA, he made a layup as good as the doctor made. Do you serving? Using that reverse up the glass. Singleton pumps. Like you see, Greg Sky didn't come down with it, but he came close. Again, the numbers for Holt. That's two trays for Holt. What they Oil and Marymount leads by six. Timmy, you got to get back with this club. I mean, the matchup for LSU, not bad at pushing it either. Not at all. Arizona found that out. Oh, and there's Chris Knight again. Now, this does remind you of when we were a little younger and we used to choose them up. I know you didn't get picked too often, but... Well, I came very late in the draft. <laughs> Wild and Woolly. 14 to 9 the score, and that's a turnover. Steps by Terrell Lowry. Loyal to Marymount, we must mention, without three of their players, particularly the point guard, Tony Walker, were he on this team, Jay Hillock would have a few more options to work with. I think that's his concern. He would like to play the tempo that Paul West had established, but he's found against the cream that it's a little tougher to get away with it because he doesn't have the foot speed. Whoops. Riggs thought someone was there, and that's a third turnover for LSU. They used the whole floor, and I think Holt has found his spot. He's hit three of them. He has nine of Loyola 17. Well, they can get you to play unattractive basketball. And right now, LSU not valuing the basketball, and does the crowd turn quickly down here? Very critical for Loyola Marymount to get out of the gates quickly, and talking with Jay Hillock earlier today, it's been a long road trip for them. They have not played a game at home as yet this year, and they have Georgia Tech coming up this weekend after being blown out by 60 at Oklahoma prior to this game. Holt moves out to the top and throws up an air ball. Now they ran a play, that's what hurt them. With a pick and roll. That's the fourth Tiger turnover. Dale Brown must be tired of seeing it. Just over four minutes gone. The 10th graded Tigers appear sluggish. This is an example of what we've seen in the first four minutes, Bill. Well, the use of the floor and, of course, the ability to nail the three nine points. Craig Holt out of the gate real strong. And, of course, right now LSU looking to counter with long passes, and they've been ineffective and off the mark. The turnovers, obviously a factor. And as we mentioned at the top of the show, this team, because of the three-point bombardments from people like Holt and Lowry, force you to shoot the ball well. And if you don't, you run the risk of losing. And you also run the risk of not having O'Neal involved, Tim. He hasn't been the last few trips down the floor. There's Lowry. 17. Check that. 20 to 9, our score now. Calculator continue, continuing to roll. Singleton forces it. It's a charge. And he had a chance to give it up, which he normally does. He had 
Shaquille down on the box. Little dish would have been a lot easier. But this raggy type of play now is conducive to Loyola Marymount. Gets you to push it up, gets you to make quick decisions, and in this particular case, an incorrect one. Vernell Singleton, you see the Band-Aids. He's, if Tom Peabody is the human bruise for Loyola Marymount, then Vernell Singleton is for LSU. They've been outscored 10 to nothing in the last two 15. Little screen down set. Briggs, he keys the defense. He went behind the back with a dribble and paid a price. Now it's a three on Shaquille. Wow, he it thinks better of it. Well, they dribble to the line, and then they feel they need a pass for it to go over that three-point line. Hanson with a no-look pass, knocked away by Christian Scott, the sophomore from Union City, California. Because when you got a franchise player like Shaquille, just be a little more patient if you don't get a layup. Hanson, the youngster with dual citizenship in Madrid, Spain, and in the United States with his first trade. Peabody in the game, keeps it alive for Scott, and O'Neal hauls it down all the way to Hanson. Now they concentrate so much after the shot to try and pressure the inbounds pass. You've noticed people free. It's connecting. That's key for LSU. 23 to 14, Loyola Marymount using that 10 nothing run to provide the difference. John O'Connell in the game underneath O'Neal, and Lowry has it rejected. Count the hoop. A message early, huh? Hey, O'Connell must be a good student. He kicked that ball right out. Then he <laughs> to try and go and shake. Well, at the shoot around today, they were going through it. Take a look. Well, this is just to let you know that I'm around. Return to sender. At today's shoot around, Jay Hillock and Tom Beebody told O'Connell and others in the post, don't hold it for long because Shaquille will eat it. <laughs> and he you didn't can, hold it for long. Well, you can pump fake yourself into a three-point play. Speaking of eating it, he coughed that one up. Lanier burns just into the game, keeping it alive, knocked away and controlled to O'Connell. Oh. Great save, but Singleton answers with an exclamation point. Really? O'Connell may be down, Bill. I just, was, he's coming back now. To, yep. I thought he could have saved it without jumping. And again, throwing it back towards his own basket. If anything, down towards half court. I thought he could have run this one down and turned and looked, but uh, of course we're sitting here unscathed. And that is a strong finish. Burnell is a penetrator and has a great wingspan, as evidence there. 25 to 16. Loyola by nine. Still straight up man. Lowry with a great dish to Petruska. The fact that he's left-handed, does that make it difficult? Yeah, well, you notice, though, Shaq went up with the right hand to block it, but that time I think he thought he was, he was playing a righty. Yeah. Hanson, got the green light. O'Neal keeping it alive. Again, another pass that goes awry for LSU. Dale Brown can't believe it. Way too many turnovers as he talks to his point guard, T.J. Pugh, and it appears he's talking about passing the basketball. Well, Pugh had that one bad, at least for LSU, turnover, the one cross court, so he came out right after it. Holt again. Peabody kept it alive. Control to Hanson for LSU. Singleton. Mm, not a good one. That's where you make that decision, Tim. Bring it back out and let Mr. O'Neill set up shop. I mean, he's devastating. He's learned so much, and it's uh, been chronicled by others with Walt and Jabbar coming in. But right here, a fourth shot. The foul bails Singleton out. That's not his type of game either. Usually pretty sound. Tom Peabody, who picked up the foul, you'll notice wearing the goggles, one of the few familiar faces on this Loyola Marymount team. They actually had a guy keep floor burns for him. <laughs> That's right. It's amazing. A stat on bruises and floor burns. <laughs> LSU traditionally not a good free throw shooting team, though O'Neal has improved in that category. 17 of his 53 came at the free throw line, breaking Eddie Pelyabinska's 
and his numbers, the Aussie that played so well for Dale Brown in his early days here. He's had a number of foreign players over the years, right? It's almost up to 10. And Alissimo of the Bayou. <laughs> <laughs> Peabody loses it to O'Neill. Griggs, he oh. struck and fouled. May have been Holt that picked it up. I, I think Holt may have gotten away with it. Did they give it to him? Mm -hmm. Pretty good looking play though, wasn't it? Yeah, well. Got behind. Because when you're trailing a play, there's not much more you can do. I thought, if anything, contact in front. But they do recover, and I think part of Jay's problem is that they don't recover as quickly to deflect and be involved. And you notice that pin on his jacket there? That's in honor of Vladimir Gamelski, mm -hmm. the old USSR right. Olympic coach. So uh, they're going over there on a World Peace Tour. His son is here tonight. Of course, uh, He'll do a little preaching over there, I'm yeah, sure. Dale, Dale's trips to the Soviet Union have been well chronicled as well. Peabody working on the baseline. Flashes high to Lowry. Not quite eight minutes gone here in the opening half, and Loyola Marymount with the lead by eight, forcing LSU into turnovers, and now they return the favor. And Griggs will return it in. <laughs> 27-21. He is the excitement, I think, on this team. He gets him going a little bit. Very active defensively. Peabody drives. Lowry spots up for the trail. They Just short. Shaq made him kick it out. Hanson for the three. Now there's some maturity. Did you see that? He didn't go over the top, O'Neal. O'Connell, not an offensive threat. Part of the problem, no interior player that really is an offensive force for Loyola Marymount. One of the reasons they're off to that two and five start. 11.20 remaining in the opening half. Could it be that an upset is on the way? In this jet setting life in which we lead, Frequent flyer miles are important. Loyal and Marymount's gotten theirs to the Maui Classic. They went with Bill Raftery and then over to Irvine for the Freedom Bowl Classic. Then they logged over 5,000 miles. It began to pile up as they went to Pauley Pavilion, then on to Oklahoma to face Billy Tubbs' crew, mm -hmm. then down here to see Daddy Dale's Tigers. And then after this, they go to see Bobby Crimmins at Georgia Tech over the weekend. Then they got to fly all the way back. We're talking in excess of 12,000 miles they've put forth. They have not played a home game all year. But just think about all the good fathers, the trips they'll be able to take with the, <laughs> the mileage plus. Not an easy place to come into. No, you don't come into the Death Dome and get away with too many wins. But right now, they are doing what's necessary to have a chance in this game. And I think LSU is contributing by rushing on the offensive end, but Loyola much more active defensively and much more patient on this end. Good pass inside the night over Gert Cummings. The youngster from the Netherlands is coming to the game while O'Neill gets a breather. That one's knocked away, controlled to LSU. That's to me, TJ Pugh has to take control now. This is the guy that's going to be their leader. His job, according to Dale Brant, is to pass the ball to the correct spots. But I think tempo now, he's got to get a feel for it. You see from the floor, Loyola Marymount shooting 50%. LSU must shoot better than 42 if they keep this up. Singleton follows. Well, nobody placed on him the sprint from the top. At that time, they ran the half court set, but it wasn't to O'Neal. Now you He's know resting. Why. Now you know why he played the low post as a freshman. Singleton can get up there. Now it's Griggs to Singleton. The Tigers on a run with O'Neal's deal on the pine. And Scott comes back and finds Chris Knight. Chris Knight has eight in the game for Loyola. 31-25. Did you notice them practicing taking the ball out today? Mm -hmm. Actually taking it out of the net, running out of bounds, and passing to a coach. After me, you got a break if you're at Loyola. That's tr truly an art form. It is. The old Celtics were great at it. 2-3. Singleton at the top likes to catch it and turn and look down, usually to O'Neal. Of course, perimeter shooters out there in Hanson. And occasionally Griggs. I think they'd rather him in tight. Hanson penetrates this time over Petruska. What a confident offensive player. Needs some help here, though. 
Knight again keeping it alive. A tie ball with the arrow to Loyola. Do you realize on the floor right now, Kirk Havoc, number 43 in white from Dietam, the Netherlands, O'Neill, who spent some time in West Germany with his father, who's now a sergeant, and they moved over to San Antonio. You see the numbers for him. Also, Petruska, the first Czechoslovakian to ever play college basketball in the United States, as well as Hansen from Madrid, Spain. What you're saying is you have to be a linguist to interview. That's right. But did you notice that time Hansen made the layup and nobody helped him with the dribble at this end? That's bad team defense. Dribbler, I should say, as Lowry penetrated. Loyola's lead has been cut to four. Piku is coming to the game for LSU, bodying up on Tom Piva. Oh, nice pass. Forced that one up. Yeah, Petruska didn't dump it. Piku in trouble. Nearly an over and back. A turnover nonetheless. Peabody is fouled. The ball never went over at half court. Right. He was very fortunate. But you've got to make judgments as you get to that timeline. You see, it was very mm -hmm. nearly. Mm -hmm. His but feet went over, but the ball did not. But he has to look ahead and find somebody or bring the dribbler back bring the dribble back and get control there is peabody and you look at those numbers he only averaged eight last year but spiritually he meant a great deal coming off the bench keying the defense which has been pretty much non-existent this year you see the goggles he had a detached retina that was surgically repaired during the summer don't forget coming up Tonight, after Sports Center, it's Tennessee and New Mexico. Midnight Eastern Time on ESPN. Now Danny Moskowitz in the ball game, and looking at some tapes, he shows some ability. I know he's tough. He was a border guard in Israel with the Air Force, so uh, he's not going to back off. There's Hammock. And Petruska knocked that one away. Peabody. Finds his man, and Christian Scott throws up an air ball. For a team that's come in here to take a four-point lead over the 10th-ranked team, they, they've thrown up three air balls here at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Jim Brando along with Bill Raftery. Happy to have you with us. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the opening half where Loyola out to a surprising start against the Tigers. Harold Boudreau is coming to the game for the first time. And is he an, a very talented basketball player? That's where I think Dale is tougher. He's got Sims and now Boudreaux coming in. I think the guards are the key to this year for them. How far can they go? Can they run the club? Oh, and what a foul by Boudreaux. Ooh, this should be an intentional foul. Oh. That's the kind of foul the first thing you look at is the mirror. to see if your girlfriend will be talking to you. A little elbow. <laughs> 31 to 29. Loyola still with the lead, but it is slipping against Dale's crew. To play this game, Jimmy, you got to play some defense. Get down and get ready and ignites your cup in the passing lane. Mr. Excitement, I think, from what I've seen thus far and, of course, in earlier games, but the giveaway to maybe the catalyst of this club. I think when Singleton is on his game, there are better decisions made when it's in his hand. Briggs is a player that was almost forgotten because he had to sit that year, but he was the Louisiana Player of the Year and took his team at Faraday to three AAA titles. Faraday, by the way, the home of the rock and roll legend. The killer, Jerry Lee Lewis. Oh, that's way before me, though. <laughs> Terrell Lowry knocks it down, 33-29. Quickly, another takeaway. And the Shaq get a lot of rest, too. O'Neal, well, you don't have to be in a hurry for LSU to get it inbounds. I mean, you've got a better half-court game. Something we should mention about the numbers he posted. He missed his first five shots against Arkansas State two nights ago, then left the game, sat for four minutes, came back to ignite the team after Dale Brown, his coach, said, look, you are the primetime player. You take over. One of the better quotes I've heard in a while. 
when you're up only by two with ten to play. With a man that has given a few quotes. <laughs> yeah. Sims in the game, and Wayne Sims, as you mentioned, can deliver off the bench. Christian Scott threw that one away. Should be under the basket, yeah. Refs get a hold of it. Throw him directly out of bounds. Sims, a pretty good jump shooter and a physical presence with O'Neal or with when he's out. But the one thing Dale Brandis said, the reason this club gets along is O'Neal. They all like him. He's a good leader. Boudreau ties the game, and LSU has never led this game. So this is a move. They were down at one time by as many as nine. 33-33. Anytime you can make Loyola work, they're going to have some problems. Piku and Moskovic in the backcourt for the Tigers as they get an opportunity to grow and mature. That's what December's for. Hammock beats Sims. Pudro tried to keep it alive, and here's Terrell Lowry. He and Griggs are active, aren't they? Griggs resting right now. Peabody definitely in trouble. No turnover called. Lowry pumps. The they foul is against Piku, and it's an intentional. I think I thought I heard technical. Let's see if they give the intentional. He just. They'll just ask Tom Lopes about it. Apparently, it was a, a shoulder, a shoulder, and a knee given by Piku as they went to the floor. Now that's two plays unnecessary, totally unnecessary. You know, at any time in the schoolyard, your teammates would turn on you. Think about it. This is the kind of game, as we mentioned, they can make you look ugly and they can frustrate you. And we may have seen a couple of examples of that. Well, I, I really believe if LSU just gets in a stance and plays good help side defense, because Gert tried to pick up the charge and as Peabody beats him, it's down on the floor. It's when they get up, though. Yeah, huh? when they yeah. got, when the ball was reversed over, that's mm -hmm. where it occurred, as Peabody was getting up. Petruska with the reverse lay-in with the left hand. They run some good things on the out-of-bounds. They free up the jump shooter, that time the center. 37-33. The tempo has slowed. And John Pingu gets the deuce. Piku and Moskovic are a couple of players that have pleasantly surprised Brown staff, as you mentioned, Bill. You like what you saw. Here is Boudreaux. Hold on. 37-37. Their open court breakaways have been fine. The substance, the half court, they haven't really been tested or haven't run it enough. Lowry was out of bounds, and it goes back over to the Tigers. By the way, for the record, Wally Tanner has shown up. Our third official did get here from Atlanta, and the turnover story beginning to even out, and hence LSU tying the game. They still have two officials on that one go rest. <laughs> Moskowitz with excellent defense. I think that's where they can turn the game in their favor. Sims off the dribble for the three. First lead of the game for LSU, and it comes with five and a half remaining in the opening half. And Shaq really a mystery. O'Neal not in there. Yep. Lowry answers, and we're tied at 40. I know Dale's smarter than this, saying we're going to show you how we can do it without you. <laughs> you never know what well, even lurks in the minds of men and... And people on the sidelines like Adele Brown. No, he told me inside how, how what a pleasure he is to coach. Another current pass here. And the foul against Piku. Unnecessary against Raheem Harris, who was definitely free for the breakaway. You see how quickly the junior Sims came over to him? Calm him down. To calm him down, you're right. Because he's been able to start, come off the bench. But right here, stepping in the passing lane, just a... A poor, there's where you just let the guy go. And here comes Mr. O'Neill to finish that thought. 
Dale was just saying earlier this evening, he's such a delight to be around. He's so coachable. But his reactions to Walton and Jabbar impressed him so much. And he said he's taken it to heart. He said, and they, they really reinforce some of the things coaches talk about, but players only believe from other players. Right. When you think about it, as you look at Harris about to toe the line, after Jabbar's trip in here to teach him the jump hook, the sky hook, we have not seen it, nor did he use it in the Arkansas State game. I get the feeling he's not showing all he has in his arsenal until conference play begins in January or until they get him the ball a little bit more, maybe. But he did take a hook in the Arizona game, and I believe the Texas game as well. But not the kind that a no. Jabbar would throw up. There so long. No need for a hook there. Count it, and the foul. Well, the problem and dilemma is why hook when I can do this, Coach? And that's part of learning to play against bigger people, which eventually will come occasionally during this year. But... Uh, that is some physical specimen. Brown anticipates, and having been in the SEC for 19 years, who could blame him, that the defenses will bring O'Neal away from the hoop as the season goes on. And, of course, the Jabbar sky hook would be the ultimate mm -hmm. counter to that maneuver. But Singleton, a good passer, and, they, and Chris Sims looks in, and Griggs does for the big guy. Another bad pass. Yeah. Hanson with a bad bounce pass. Holt, who hit three straight threes before not scoring in the last 10 minutes, loses it. And the foul by Singleton. Loyola Marymount had 10 unanswered points in a two-minute, 15-second period, triggered by three three-point hits by Craig Holt. He's been shut down ever since. Because you got to feel for Jay Hill. Like, you know, you're coming in to a program that had such great success, and now you've had a different philosophy of coaching. But you've got to buy what Westhead did because it was so successful. And I, I just think he's going to wait a long time if he does change a little bit because I think they would like to recruit kids of that Kimball Gathers level that not, can run this. Not only did he recruit this style of play, but he recruited a schedule that West had made. I think Paul knew he was leaving. <laughs> well, he had, you know, the, the idea and the attitude of the players to Paul Westhead was that of somewhat of a nutty professor. He got along with them because of that. He had other interests outside of basketball. Jay Hillock is in contrast to that as an assistant coach. Pretty much the gym rat wakes up in the morning diagramming plays. So the adjustment to the new head coach obvious, obviously is something they're going to. Briggs off the feed from Hanson. And O'Neill with the outlet. Because you're easily offended by intellectuals. I've noticed that. <laughs> Good deflection by Pugh. Tie ball with the arrow to the Tigers. When I mention Nutty Professor, I mean that in a kind manner, of course, about Paul Westhead, whom Dale Brown faced last year in a game that went into overtime and ended with a 148-141 final. The girls' typewriter broke, and yeah. the running score person. Randy Hayden, the statistician for that game, told me, and he's working with us tonight, he said he, he had to have two pieces of paper. Two stat sheets for that game. Thursday, I think he's calmed down on the sideline. I mean, he's near, not near as vociferous, more analytical. Of course, the better the players you get, the more insight you develop in this game. He's learned when to use the emotion mm -hmm. as well. Hanson. Holt retrieves it, and now Lowry is on the loose. Gets right past T.J. Hugh. But Bruce still keeping it alive. The big check is a load in the lane. Mm -hmm. And O'Neal really not responding as much as, as Petruska goes up. 3.59 remaining in the opening half. John Saunders is standing by. Coming up at halftime, allegations of serious rules violations by the Syracuse University basketball program. That from a local newspaper. Plus, Shaquille O'Neal. Is he the best player in the country? We could find out. Let's go back to Tim and Bill. All right, John, and when you think about Shaquille O'Neal, many people are surprised that he's as good as he is this year. But believe me, we found out a great deal at the U.S. Olympic Festival with the many records that went down. Back during the summer, held in Minneapolis and St. Paul. 44-44, our score. There are the records. We're talking about Patrick Ewings, 
Big Michael numbers. Jordan's, Charles Barkley's, they all played there. And he literally owns the record books now in U.S. Olympic Festival history. He walks in the steps of the great ones. Yeah. Now, if he's dedicated, he's going to turn out to be one of the premier centers. All indications are he is as dedicated as you mentioned. And there's another rejection. Lowry will smile about that one. And he'll give him a little whooping to go with it. That was up over the box. I mean, you're talking 12. I think Lowry said he was impressed with his elevation, but it counts anyway. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta go at him, and if, if you can, get a passing lane, but also on occasion, make him go up real high. I mean, the old Jerry West layup, he threw it up over the big centers of the NBA. Sean Gray. Hanson. Nice look. Oh, oh. Pew to Singleton. Pew. That's what he has to do. Look at right back at <laughs> Petruska with the foul from Briggs. Sean will pick up a few that way. Not bad, though. Nice anticipation. Got himself in good position. I could just, you know, reflecting back as they really pick apart the 2-3 zone. Great look by Pugh, and that's what he has to do more of, I think, to make them a good basketball team. But if the Kimballs of the world go to Loyola, guys that can run and, of course, pressure, then the system is more attractive. You see Petruska at the line. This is a young man that's learning the English language a great deal. And Tom Peabody, who is the captain of this team, as you see Lemire Burns coming in for Hanson, he has roomed with him, and because he's the captain and the elder statesman of the team, he's spending some time teaching him the language. Today, he was asking about defending O'Neill. He says, here's how you do it, and Tom Peabody got on top of him. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> on his shoulder. Uh, Singleton. Nice cut. And, of course, then the acknowledgement. Good pass. Nice you by one. Lowry. Petruska up with O'Neill. Saved to O'Connell. <laughs> Taken away by Burns. My goodness. I thought he was manhandled. Bridge. Boy, Singleton put it in with his elbow. What a curl, huh? Up on the underarm. That's an amazing <laughs> play by Burnell Singleton. It sure was. It sort of slithered down. The impact of the elbow mm -hmm. sent that one into the hoop off the window. That's a nice kiss. That's what you call a follow-through kiss. <laughs> 50 to 47, Tigers. Briggs with another. That's a Michael Jordan move where they dip between the defenders. Uh, Michael, he can get away with it. Not a bad try, but Larry. But you always say to your kids, you know, keep the ball on your fingertips and make sure you have full control before you shoot. That one had perspiration when it came through. He took his forearm and literally threw it into the window pane. <laughs> he picks up his oh. third foul and he'll sit down. That does hurt them. He has so much to do. Of course, not a bad sum, huh? You bet. Singleton sitting down. By the way, Wayne Sims, who checked in for him, is the first cousin of Johnny Jones, who is a fine guard for Dale Brown, now assisting him at LSU. Petruska with the double pump picked up. That's what a big guy does, right, Timmy? And then he makes you hurry shots, makes you change your mind. Now, you mentioned not being able to understand English. I used to coach in Puerto Rico, and my team always understood me when we were ahead. And then <laughs> we were behind. They <laughs> turn a deaf ear. The inter international language of basketball, though, speaks for itself. Sims in the lane. O'Neal followed. Well, he got that big mid up and tapped it through. Wow. Holt. And look out. Yeah, he'll just play ping pong now. He double dribbled. Count it and the foul. Well, when you're that good and that big, you get away with it. He double dribbled in the backcourt, trying to get control. But he has gone wire to wire on occasion, getting the rebound, going all the way down and taking a layup earlier this year. See, he picked it up with mm -hmm. the left. <laughs> well, you get a few. But you yeah. almost shielded it with one hand. I mean, the official may not have seen the ball. No, no I'm sure they didn't see it. <laughs> 
This, by the way, is LSU's largest lead at 55-47. Look at this oh. speed. Terrell Lowry. Good to see him. He had a real tough game. I think he was 0 for 9 against UCLA early has. in the game, and he's playing much better. Yeah, even than he did in Maui. He already has 19 in this game. Burns. Holt brings it down for Loyola. Remember we used to say numbers, Tim, on a break? They don't need numbers. It could be one against four. They'll get a shot. Terrell Lowry, who was averaging 28, has 22. Uh, Vela News 52. Nice save by Pugh and lost it. Briggs. Well, Sean got a little slap on the wrist, didn't he, for missing some classes and had a missing game this week, but uh, it got his attention. Neil Brown talking to his team, saying someone must check him. He has five three-pointers now, Lowry. And the Tigers commit the turnover on the charge. Lanier Burns guilty that time. 57-55, and the LSU lead, which was once eight, is now only two. And coming up at halftime, the investigation, the Syracuse Post Standard with some interesting news today for Jim Beheim's team. The reaction from the UNLV camp on the latest allegations by the NCAA. And we had an opportunity to go inside Shaquille O'Neal, find the man behind the shack. All of that coming up with my good friend John Saunders at halftime. And John was in there now. He with me, and we got a chance to see this. Loyola club. They're a lot better, John, than they were out there, I think. Yeah, by the way, that was something he reminded me of very often the mm -hmm. last few few months. We did have a few spare moments. <laughs> Hold with a nice play. We're tied at 57. This is a 10-2 run for Loyola. It's an entertaining half. And not as fast-paced as I thought. And yet, on occasion, it has been up tempo. Yeah, we're looking at 114 points scored in the half, and it's been rather quiet. Mm -hmm. A rather quiet 114. And they're holding it. This could be a violation. O'Neal off the alley-oop. Sims throws it up. And Holt comes away with it. Good pass. Would have counted had it gone. But the iron was unkind. Ooh, that's one. To John O'Connell. We've come to halftime. LSU, rated 10th in the country, between Arizona and Illinois. Our time. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, Loyola Marymount versus LSU, is brought to you by Dodge for performance quality, safety, and value. Welcome home, America. And by McDonald's. You know the one. It's McDonald's for food, folks, and fun. Prior to tonight's game, Dale Brown was very concerned because this was the game between Arizona last weekend and Illinois this weekend. And he had reason for that concern as we are tied at 57. Tim Brando back again with Bill Raftery. Shaquille O'Neal, not really the story offensively nope. in this game for LSU, but they have managed to get down low to Vernell Singleton. Well, I think when they run their half-court stuff, they could get O'Neal involved. Here, Pew, the choreographer, the 2-3 zone picked apart by a talented performer, Vernell Singleton, with an outstanding half. Terrell Lowry has really been a highlight show in the first half for Loyola. Goes to the goal when necessary. You can just see it's a one-man fast break. He just blows by people, 25 points, and now you've got them softened up with the drive. Pull it up, and of course the defense back thinking drive. He's able to drill that three-pointer, five for seven, outstanding. Both hmm. teams are shooting well, and they must, Bill, at, through the course of this game for it to continue at this pace, both at 52%. And the free throws, you see Loyola at the line many more times. The rebounding story, obviously, to LSU, but O'Neal not getting the minutes necessary and i think you smelled a rat earlier tonight when you said that the pace of this game would not play into o'neill's they run by him get the power game get the get him involved i think is important take your easy basket but if it's not there back it up and get him involved not bad in a normal game mm -hmm. <laughs> right with a normal player yeah he's extraordinary The thing that Brown did was he managed to get him some minutes on the pine 
and allow the rest of the guys to play at mm -hmm. the flow that Loyola dictated. And it got him back in, in a way, and he's got such a good temperament, it does not bother him. A lot of guys would hang the head. Petruska rejected by O'Neill. His first pure block of the game, but Petruska takes it right back and fives nine. Look at this, heads up play by Hull. Oh my goodness, is that quick enough? Steele get the feet set. <laughs> Spot up in a hurry. 59-57 our score. Singleton loses it to Christian Scott. A two on one for Lowry. No such thing. Uh, right there, not good defense. You can't let a guy just penetrate down the middle. Got to make him change his dribble path. Hanson for the tray. Nice soft catch, huh? Tipped it to himself. 61-59, barely a minute deep. Into the second half. Petruska picked up the heel on the head fake. Not afraid, though. Not a bad-looking move, other than the walk. And the other thing I know is LSU, too, on defense. You don't have to go down and help him. O'Neal can handle his own guys. So he can stay at home on the shooters. Good pass to Shaquille and the foul against Petruska. Well, the house was ready to come down. <laughs> O'Neal gets a laugh out of it as Petruska picks up the first one. Something that we've seen not enough of has been this, Bill. But he's running the floor nicely early, almost had the steal. But like all people in the game, he loves to complete the sequence. His attitude is what has impressed me most, his personality. Something you could learn a little bit from. <laughs> oh, he's upbeat. And I think if the guards could get the shack involved, he'll be going to the rack pretty strong all year long. Well, the thing you like to see, his hero is his dad. And believe me, Philip Harrison, the Army Sergeant, has a lot to do with why he'll probably stay mm -hmm. at LSU for at least another year. I don't know. The, the money may be too good by the time he concludes his junior season. Look at this rebound. Give it up, give it up, and go. Foul picked up by Knight as Singleton went hard to the glass. He actually handles the ball better than Kareem did, and he was very good at UCLA and in high school, bringing it down the middle. I mean, people would be shocked what he could do, but I think he might be a little better in that facet of the game. Bernal Singleton at the line. When you see Singleton play, he really evokes memories of Ricky Blanton. They do have one thing in common. They both played the pivot and were 6'6". They were centers in high school, yeah. I think, right? And then played it here the first year. But they're the kind of players that Dale Brown must have at least one of to have an effective year. Well, if he can't motivate somebody, he's not having fun at this job, too. He wants guys to play over their head. 62-61. LSU. Good pressure T with the big guy waiting. Boy, Knight knew it too, didn't he? Jump ball. Good oh, ball. Magnificent play from the backside by O'Neill. The arrow goes back the other way to the Tigers. I saw Carl Malone play the other night, and he is hard and competitive, and he is not a soft guy either. Very well put together. Very involved in the game. See, a year ago, that was a foul against O'Neill. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons he fouled out of nine games, leading the SEC in that category. Tries to seal off down low. Hanson. Singleton skying, recovered by Christian Scott. Now he's on the loose with that head down. He finds O'Connell. Numbers. Two against no one. Uh, what, what happens to Loyola when the guards go to the goal, nobody's peeling back. John Look at this. Donald. Same thing. Yeah. Mm. Hanson counters. Come on, fellas. Turn and get back. 66-63. Well, I asked you if you wanted to coach before the game. Wow. <laughs> You're having some fun with it now. Well, I've been beaten by a lot of points, but I don't quite <laughs> like to give them up every night. <laughs> That was a sneaky pass from Knight inside to Scott. And the loose ball is taken away by Christian Scott. Watch the shack. Uh, I thought he'd get up in time. Nice look. And Chris Knight with a real strong finish. Good work by O'Connell keeping it alive. 
66 to 65. There's the alley-oop. Just too strong by O'Neill. Too many of those, and Dale Brown will not be pleased with his team's defense. To me, when this club learns how to reverse the ball and be patient, they're going to get easy alley-oops to the big guy. Bridge fouled in the lane. Terrell Lowry, Terrell Lowry picked it up. Don't forget, coming up Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the Broncos and the Seahawks. Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann will have it all for you as ESPN's coverage of the National Football League continues. That is obviously preceded by Chris Berman and company with NFL Primetime. Just got a chance to chat with Joe Joe Dean. Mm. Used to be my boss, the new the AD here, not new, a couple of years now at LSU. Hired himself a new football coach, Curly Holman, formerly of Southern Mississippi. A team, by the way, you'll see in the All-American Bowl from Birmingham on ESPN during our bowl week. Joe, Joe owes me some expenses from years ago. <laughs> and they're trying to collect today. O'Connell shot too strong. Lowry picks up a, another foul. And that's two on him, both in the last minute or so. And for, he is really quick, though, isn't he, Lowry? He can blow by people. Jay Hillock looks on. Boy, he is in desperate need of just a good news game. Right now, this could be just the kind of game that's necessary to give his team a little a little punch as it goes into Georgia Tech over the weekend. Lowry on the loose, finds Holt for the trend. <laughs> Here comes Shaquille, a solo deal, oh. and a foul. A charge against O'Neal. Well, he's got to give it up earlier. He knows. Yeah. I mean, he's having some fun, too. Dale's not. But, uh, but it, the big fella. Who took who took the charge though? Number eleven, the human bruise. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't mind offering it up, glasses and all. Tom Peabody. That takes a lot of nerve and intestinal fortitude as well. Petruska tries the drop step and it doesn't work against Shaq. The position too. 67-67. Both teams have 10 points in the second half, and we're still tied. Well, you got to get back with anybody, but this particular club, you've got to make sure you get down the floor. And particularly, the guards seem to be in good shape. Jaquil's the last one down, and all of a sudden, this explosive play, they don't match up properly. And, of course, it's an easy finish. You mentioned Joe Dean. There he is with his lovely wife, Doris, recently the athletic director. And in SEC country, he was known as Strang Music <laughs> when he was the color commentator for most of the game scene, particularly during the Maravich era when <laughs> Pistol Pete met Dean the Dream Miminger at the Garden in the 70 NIT. Kyle Macy from Lexington, KY. Nice break. Foul by Holt. Not a bad giveaway, though. Holt in pretty good position. But that, Joe had a bunch of those sayings. They didn't. He really did. But this is a tough team to prepare for because there aren't a lot of clubs on your schedule that play like this. And you're, you're really thrown off of your game offensively. You don't get coordinated. And I think, if anything, a guy like the Shaq has had good composure, knowing that he's not going to get down on the box and have it dumped down, let him go through his little low post moves. Meanwhile, we see Hillock on the other side. He's orchestrating from time to time zones into this defensive plan that was not there. The, those zone defenses were not there during Westhead. And you see Syracuse, well, you wonder if the problems that have beset that program off the court may have something to do with what's going on with Thousand State tonight. And all school out of the Baltimore. They could very well be. You know, that's a tough situation for any school and players. But the glue of this club, to me at least, Burn Singleton stepping in, picking up the charge. Tom Peabody got his second foul there. But he leads it by a deuce. Little man of man, see if he get the big guy involved. He kept it high, and he got the roll. Say goodnight, huh? 
tough to match up. You have to feel for Petruska. It's a tie ball. You know he wants the ball, and he can be effective with it, but he's so aware that O'Neal's behind him. He won't see that in the West Coast Athletic Conference. He makes you, he makes, O'Neal makes you wish you were home for the holidays <laughs> in Czechoslovakia, right? Uh, you won't see that large a figure looming in let's, their league. Let's face it, this is a two and five team. They could lose this game, though. They will definitely be an underdog in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. But they could still win their conference and still be dangerous in the opening round of the NCAA because of you the style of play. You mentioned the inside game. Somebody's got to step up for them a little bit. Hillock seems to believe that Papruska is that guy. He's the remedy for the problem. Well, this game gives him a little more confidence. What was the word he used today? Embarrassing at Oklahoma. Yeah. And the kids felt embarrassed, too. But they've come back beautifully here and going right at him, huh? Petruska may be that remedy. Mm -hmm. Jay Hillock took time to talk to his team after the Oklahoma game, and he asked his guys, do you want to stay with this style, fellas? Because at Gonzaga, this wasn't my style. Mm -hmm. Do you want to lose by 60, or do you want to be competitive? They said, well, we're just as embarrassed as you are, but we want to continue with this style of play. For now, we'll acquiesce. Very democratic, but if the losses continue, I'm sure the coach will step forward. But I, I do think... It's a good recruiting ploy, too, to stick it out this year, see what they can bang out, see what kind of kids they can attract. 71-69, the Tigers still cling to that two-point lead. Griggs with Peabody Airborne. Singleton with more and more garbage that looks better and better each time out. Petruska picks up the foul, his second. The one option Dale has is a lot more depth, and particularly big depth. You know, Kurt, Kurt Hammock, and of course Sims, too, who... Hammock gave him some positive minutes in the Arizona game, came up with two critical hoops late. People remember that as being a 10-point game, but it was a one-point lead with 40 seconds to play. Well, he didn't go after a blow then, I don't think. Hammock, no. <laughs> I think 33 had something to do with him sitting for the moment. I've noticed Dale has done that a lot more with him. A quick conversation, get him back in. Similar to the way he would normally treat a point guard. Well, he is the leader of the team. He's been running the break like a point guard. 73-69, Singleton with 20. Good aggressive D right here. Stepping it up a little. And Hanson check Lowry. He doesn't think so. Off the back iron, and Hanson pulls it away. Nice look. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Vernal with the verticality. And Pugh with the head up all the way. Good run. Matuska outside. And the foul inside against O'Connell. Jay Hillett beginning to smell a run from mm -hmm. LSU. It's all started with the D. I think it's stepped up. More organized on the break. And he's been listening to you, huh? He smelled the run all right. He called a timeout. Well, this is a high level of play, but it's extraordinary elevation at the end of this break with Q looking and what did you call this that's a little verticality verticality yeah. yeah well that's the guy i think that just is the soundest of all maybe not the principle of verticality from an official's mm -hmm. handbook but verticality nonetheless there is craig Karst, the assistant from west virginia state who has recruited much of this talent johnny jones to his right and also a good start early had some kids signed and you know in talking to dale who's not ready yeah the packed attack but in a couple of years or whenever he is ready he just feels he's worked so hard to get so much good talent to lsu that he might be the guy to get the nod but when you think about it dale brown is synonymous with this program and he came from north dakota the fact that he coached at an naia school that's the kind of underdog role dale brown likes mm -hmm. and he did well yeah. in his head coaching assignment Harrell Loudry is doing well, is he? <laughs> Bombing in another tray at 75-72. Well, all your rules as a coach and all your drills, I mean, it's tough to adhere to them. 
look at that. He explored his options and then went with the when, final one. When it's out. Holt answers for three. He hit three in a row during that 10 nothing run to give them that early advantage in the first half. They usually say, get back and don't give up the layup. Get back and don't give up the 22-footer. Man to man, they can't play. Using the glass, 79-75, Tigers. Peabody. Recognition of the shooter, and O'Neal knocked it away. In play. Touch. Second clean block for O'Neal in the game. Now he'll leave it open for Griggs. Oh, now they're paying attention to the shack. Left the jump shooter open. Holt will bomb away again, and he riddles it through. 81-78. If they shoot like this, they can stay with a lot of teams. Uh, Dale's got to feel better about the shack, though. He's opened things up for the shooters. He's been a fact. Dale has the leg cross. <laughs> the John Wooden look. Foul by Hanson. Now he's up. Yep. We'll get Wayne Sims back into the game. We're at the Pete Maravich Assembly Center. Don't you know Pete is looking down and saying a shootout is just what I wanted to see? That's what we've got. 83-78, LSU by five. And just over 12 to play, and O'Neal will take a seat. Was he impressed, huh? What a story here yeah. in their heyday. They lit it up a little bit. Holt again. Finally, he finds a wing where he does not have the range. Petruska. Answer. He hangs in there. I mean, it's not easy competing at this extraordinary level. Unorthodox, but effective. Mm -hmm. Great pass, Hanson to Sims. Take a look at the shot clock. We haven't seen it in quite a while. We thought we... We thought we'd let you know that it was operative. He didn't get his nails done, the shot clock operator, I know that. This is a long possession here. 12 seconds. Somebody will be coming out. <laughs> 85-82. Hanson, high off the window. The Matador look, really, defensively. A steal by Grigg. I mean, guys gamble, and then they don't get the support. I mean... You and I might make a couple of these shots. LSU getting some easy attempts. The zone, a little bit better. Again, a rarity from Loyola's defensive alignment a year ago. Hanson throws up an air ball. Well, they don't have a resuscitator, so they fall back to relax in the zone. Lowry, is, what a finger roll with the left hand. He has 32 points. Sims with a jump hook. Eighty-nine, eighty-four. 84 Screen by Scott, and Lowry finds Petruska in the middle. And he's fouled by Sims. So what happens with this speed of game to your defense? I'm talking about LSU now. You relax a little, you give up post position as Sims did there. You get away from your techniques that have been drilled into you. You notice the guys with their hands down on their knees? They're taking some blows, and it's not because of the high altitude in Baton Rouge. The high speed in Baton Rouge. Yeah, the high speed and velocity has something to do with it. The Loyola Marymount will try to beat you, and fatigue is part of their ploy. They think they can outdistance people because of their style of play. Have the opposition run out of gas. Watching Patriska shoot his free throws before the game. You know, it's not the prettiest release, down under 60%. O'Connell will come into the game for Patriska. It's been a job well done for the Czechoslovakian against this kind of caliber competition. Little trap. We do too much of that all game. Boudreau to Shaquille. Yes! And a foul. Say goodnight. Well, you want to know how to play this game like a man? Take a look at this. 
once he parks down that low, whew, you can give him a ticket and tow him away, but he's going to finish the play. It's like paying the toll when you get on that freeway, right? Yeah. Holt. Foul picked up by Holt. Nice try by Holt, but that it is, is his fourth, and it comes after a three-point try. He's missed a couple in a row. Great effort, but uh, he didn't touch him. It would have been much better for him, obviously. Don't forget, coming up, whole week on ESPN. I'll be joined by Lee Corso and Mike Godfrey. We have the Liberty Bowl coming up, Ohio State and Air Force. The All-American Bowl with North Carolina State against Southern Mississippi, and that will be followed with the Holiday Bowl featuring Ty Detmer, the Heisman Trophy winner against Texas A&M. Darren Lewis will be on display, and Michigan against Ole Miss in the Mazda Gator Bowl. Ron Franklin and Gary Danielson will be busy, as will Sean McDonough and Mike Godfrey. This is the largest lead, by the way, for Dale Brown's club as Moskovitz puts in both. And the team foul situation definitely coming into the forefront. Loyola Marymount has already committed 10, so LSU shoots two each time the rest of the way. And there Burns picks up the foul. Very physical kind of game on cuts, a lot of bangs. That's the second on Burns. It may take a while the remainder of this game because you realize obviously that Loyola must continue to foul LSU not as we said earlier known for its free throw shooting Jay Hillock will continue to send them to the line rather than getting the shipping they just don't have the quality bodies to come in though if they happen to get in deep foul trouble Darrell Lowry knocks it down and he has 34 in the game I, I mentioned before they do a nice job with their out of bounds plays screening people getting jumpers like Lowry you see Boudreaux Oh, by the way, a high school All-American from Cecilia High School here in Louisiana. Boudreaux runs it down. Stop somebody on him. This Sims. This is like layup to it. Yep. Half by both Peabody and Lowry. Lowry will pick it up. Adele, you know, once you schedule a game with Loyola Marymount, it, it takes whatever you believe in away from you. And it can be awfully frustrating. But it's a fan's delight, and oh. I think the kind of game that people always would love to see. Play-by-play -play guy's delight. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> Big Daddy. That's yeah, kind of difficult to lay out with all these layups. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just think if they improve a little bit right now, on the defensive end, they could turn their year around. I mean, get back, get position. There's the steal. Boudreaux. All he had to wait was a second. He had Moskowitz. Christian Scott. They're overpassing on that offensive end. Burns to Boudreaux. Lanier Burns eclipses the 100 mark, and O'Connell comes back to answer. It's a 10-point Tiger lead. That's the quarterback situation at LSU. <laughs> the Shaq will be able to see over all those linemen. I know that. It's very much up in the air. Great look. He does have a nice feel, doesn't he? Oh, game? he does. And the work, the work ethic. Nice comes, little feature. Comes into the anytime he's on the court. And O'Connell with a steal off the inbounds, and Loyola still in it. 101-93 with over eight to play. And they are impressive in that aspect, you know, bouncing back, showing a lot of care and concern with this game after the Oklahoma difficulties. Lanier Burns with a hop skip. Petruska, who got the blow, will come back into the game along with Raheem Harris, who, by the way, was the East Bay Player of the Year. Harris from Skyline High School, which, by the way, also brought Gary Payton and Terrell Lowry to Loyola. 
Those are the kinds of players that Loyola Marymount must continue to recruit. And this style, as you mentioned, will help them. Well, they, get, they get a guy like Peyton. Jay will be delighted, huh? Yeah. He can rev it up another notch. Of course, Gary Payton played at Oregon State. Petruska. Mm -hmm. Sims may have gotten away with one out of bounds to Loyola. 7.50 remaining. Tigers leading, but Loyola not out of it. Well, when you have great players, you let them do a lot of things, including timeouts, making give big decisions at the end of the game, but just the soft touch and the feel right away. See the little peek and the look away, and hello, look what I've got. You see Shaquille Candy. Oh, he is He tough. really can. He really is impressive. This is also an impressive display by Loyola Marymount when you consider that Walker, who had that wrist injury and tried to have it surgically repaired, he's not on this trip, nor are the two backups in the backcourt. This is a depleted Loyola Marymount team hanging with LSU on their home floor. And there's a nice play by Petruska. Mm -hmm. The big guy was a little slow getting back. O'Neal did not sprint. Patriska, you can't have contact with a center like O'Neal because if he has you, he can dictate what he wants. He has that feel. You gotta give a little room. O'Neal, again, nice yeah. play. Just to switch sides. Nice footwork. Put a body on the left side of that hip that time, didn't he? He sure did. Then he spun. I didn't spin, but stepped behind and in proper position. He's living and learning the American way to play basketball on the defensive end. Is that 2-3 again? Great. Nice. Oh, great bounce pass. And Petruska had to rotate over to Greg. I, I still think if they want to run their half-court stuff, they can get any shot they want. The running game early was not effective. They made a lot of mistakes, but that was a case in point of setting up low and then just sealing the backside of the zone. O'Neal, by the way, has 22 now, 14 of those in the second half, 10 of 13 from the floor. Bridge made Scott readjust in midair, and Pugh will make him pay, along with Bridge to follow. The lead back to 12, and there's the shot clock again. Uh, four seconds. <laughs> <laughs> to me, am I wacky? I mean, the LSU's had more layups. You've got to reach Wait a minute. Back. The shot clock's not moving. It's not <laughs> shot clock not operating. Well, it's not, they don't have it for LSU. They just have it for LSU. <laughs> <laughs> there they go. You're right. <laughs> and it's six seconds that time. Chris Rock is fouled by O'Neal. I would love Jay Hillock's guys to just get back on defense. I mean, they're running, but they're not running the other way as hard. And if they did, I think they could control the game a little bit better. Barry Tompkins, who worked so hard last night on the UNLV Princeton game that you witnessed on ESPN, will be witnessing Greg Haugen and Billy Young tonight at 9.30 Eastern Time, immediately following our game. After the heavyweights of O'Neill and company, the lightweights on display, Haugen and Billy Young. Al Bernstein will join there. And those two are basketball junkies. Larry <laughs> Both of them spend a lot of time in Las Vegas, not necessarily around the squared circle. In, in the shark tank, you, you said? Bet. <laughs> LMU back to within nine. Without Terrell Lowry, they wouldn't be close. Mm -hmm. Boy, has he shouldered the responsibility of leadership. 25 at the half. That'll give most guys a good night, huh? Oh! Hanson to O'Neal. Lowry, 36 and counting. Shaquille just doesn't score. He turns your face red. Oh, by the way, just a subtle Shaquille slam off the window. He wasn't emotional enough. He just can be devastating. Going to the chin. This is early. I mean, he just puts egg in your face. You got to pull your overcoat over your eyes. And he just completes plays. 
That's the Syracuse vengeance. game. Look at that. Only 7.36 remaining in the Orangeman. Only by three over Towson State. Come on, Rich. For those of you that are just joining us, remember Syracuse hit with some allegations today in the local newspaper, the Syracuse Post Standard, which was documented by John Saunders at halftime. There's Towson sent Kirk Lee to the New Jersey Nets. So they've seen pretty fair talent. Three Truex. We don't want to take away from their performance. They're obviously getting the job done. Briggs picks up his step. Seventh team foul against LSU. So the one and one situation comes into play. And boy, Tom Peabody representing a depleted bench from a year ago. And you see one eye, mm -hmm. one eyelid going down. He's got that detached retina that was replaced surgically during the offseason. They're, they're tough minded kids. I mean, they certainly believe in themselves in this system as they refer to it. You know, he, he transferred from Rice, though, mm -hmm. and, and was a fine point guard at Modern Day High School on a fine basketball team he played with. Became a complimentary player a year ago, and while they miss, obviously, the Friars, the Steamers, the Gatherses, and, and company, he really was what mm. that team was all about. That was an over-the-top to Christian with a good job holding on the loss. He was the heart and soul of mm -hmm. that team. Griggs takes it away. 109-100. Hugh rejected by Knight. How do you do, Terrell Lowry? One on four. Easy. 40 in the game for Lowry. Putting on a pistol-like performance in the house that Maravich built. The lead is only seven for the Tigers. Singleton. That's that that Singleton finds and will dump it down as well to O'Neal. Pretty play. Oh, Petrusco with a great first step. He has 16 in the game. Quietly, Petrusco getting better and better as the second half is the breath. O'Neal not happy with Petrusco touching it. But you know, the Shaq has to get in a defensive stance, by the way, in looking at different games. Now they got Petrusco holding O'Neal. They have been whacking one another, Tim but he'll get less fouls if he's in a stand. He doesn't open guys up to stand up. That's the third on Petrusco. They had been whacking one another early. Top of the screen is a little... Just pay attention. Whack. I would think you'd uh, check your lip page. Mm -hmm. You caught one of those. Petrusco, if you're wondering how he came about going to Loyola Marymount, Back in 88, Westhead team took on the national team from Czechoslovakia. He was a three-year member of that team. He had a tremendous game. He impressed Hillock. He was 15 of 17 from the floor that day. And he was also impressed with the style of play employed by Loyola Marymount. So when he decided to come to the United States, there was no question in his mind that Loyola Marymount would be his new home. And he's nothing to be embarrassed about the way he's played tonight. Guy, plus others that come over when you have the ball. Got a push, my yeah. goodness. No call. <laughs> now we get one. It goes back over to LSU. The Pete Rose of Loyola, huh? <laughs> Down and dirty. A trainer's dilemma, huh? You'll kill the budget with band-aids and adhesive. Dale Brown definitely has his fair share of towel boys. You know, in the early days, in 72, he couldn't find that many to come to a game. Now he's got more towel boys than he wants that spectator. <laughs> they're great. Uh, Those are great young kids, and they always remember. They could tell everyone when they're in high school that they were once a ball boy or a towel boy. When Tim Brand does it again. <laughs> <laughs> the zone has been really the only defense that's been somewhat successful in signing LSU. But Chris almost man to man on the big guy. There's the alley -oop. And good recognition by Petruska. Staying with him as O'Neal wheeled and deal. Burns with the steal. Knocked away by Petruska. You really have to be impressed with his second half. 348 remaining. LSU still leading. But it is still in doubt. Against Arizona, they got this alley-oop, but 
Petrushka has the feel. He also knows where he is. Normally you like to take the legs of the big guy out, but here he knows he's under far enough, but almost an extraordinary. Now look at the little yank at the end to get back into. That's a momentum gatherer as you're running back court. So welcome to America. Yes. That kind of pull, huh? <laughs> Storyline, Baton Rouge, 70 points in the paint, though Petruska's played well in the second half, and Lowry with 40 points. A human highlight film for Loyola Marymount. Hanson to trigger it in for LSU as we come back to play with 3.48 remaining. The Tigers are shooting two. Loyola committed its 10th personal foul a long time ago, the rest of the way. Loyola Marymount in the bonus for one and ones. LSU has committed 17 fouls as you see the clock and the score. That's the story late in Baton Rouge. This is almost a boxing one when you really analyze it. Man to man on the big guy. Everybody else is covering their area. You should be able to get some easy shots with ball movement. O'Neal. He has 28 and 20 of them in the second half. 114-104. One big guy for another big guy. Showed a lot of heart. I really believe if LSU played more half court, this would not be close. If they make you go, it always looks like you're open. Like you're Pretty play. That was almost 10. Hanson knew it. Used the touch pass. Got it where he wanted, but Singleton... Made an error in judgment, and Petruska got in the way. Rejected by O'Neal, the third block by Shaquille. Riggs beats Singleton. Petruska picks up his fourth. He has worked hard, though, huh? Ran the floor. Shaq may have got a little body on him. When he needs something, it's usually Vernell Singleton, but he has mixed it up with the best of them. Okay, a lot of respect goes to him, I think. I think the, uh, Shaquille will say the same. And he has played hard and well. Singleton, who's been bothered with a cold groin this year, has also had some ankle problems. Don't forget, coming up tonight, Jimmy Valvano and company standing by for Tennessee and New Mexico, beginning at midnight Eastern time on ESPN. Allen Houston will be on display at the pit in Albuquerque. And remember, Luke Longley, outstanding big man for Dave Bliss's team. 7-2 Australian. by Griggs. Oh, that's why they call him Griggsy. Oh, now you make a mistake out that high, you pay. Lowry. That's a that's one of the few misses for Terrell Lowry. And he makes up for it with a near steal. Good call here, too. Hit the foot. Yeah. Now Dale will get into it. That's the first time we've seen animated. Yeah, it's an animation from Dale. And stoking the fire a little. For the moment, I thought he was near a technical. I think he was just retrieving the ball. Watch the foot. That's why you have managers. Off Not the it, knee. Yep. It, it did go off Singleton, huh? It did. Dale was looking at the foot, not the knee. On the other end, Petruska followed by Scott. So that time the officials made the proper call. Everybody wants to jam, but a heads-up play, I think, that time. Hanson forfeiting it to run some clock. Oh, Christian Scott slapped that one away, and Hanson comes back for LSU. Great play. Hanson right there, as well as Griggs. Griggs is with some excitement on that defensive end. one of the reasons why Dale likes this team so much even though Jackson left after his sophomore year those kinds of plays hitting the turf Dale digs that kind of play well he'll never knock he loves his kids yeah. over the years and 
He's telling me today, Chris brought a home for his mother. He's up in Elkport today. Nice little touch. But it's a different type of feeling. There's a lot more answers inside, but a, a lot of stress on the guards, particularly few, I think, to run the show. Now with under 50 to play, LSU using clock. Up 10. The foul against Chris Knight. Jay Hillock will be proud of his team's effort, though it will be in a losing cause, it would appear. Real solid. And this is a great comeback game for them. Nobody would want to schedule to play. 13 straight when scoring over 100, so he likes the century mark, that man. You talk about him protecting his players. He protects them long after they leave college, as has been chronicled in Denver this past week. He and Bernie Bickerstaff mm -hmm. having a debate in print. The general manager of the Denver Nuggets, who was very upset with Jackson and his apparent lethargic start this year. This, uh, that Tourette syndrome causing most of the problems, as we're told by Dale. 42 points for Lowry as Shaq no longer needs to take it to the rack. <laughs> He's done. And that's five on hold. Has an influence on the game above the norm. Yeah, he really does. No deal. Fred Holt played well, particularly early, to give Loyola Marymount a 10-point lead and a, and a lead that they definitely had to have to stay in this game throughout the 40-minute run. Get three consecutive threes. I think if they're going <laughs> to... By the way, that's O'Neal that they say is awesome baby. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Second billing there, huh? <laughs> Even to you. Well, we'll all take second billing to Yeah, him. you bet we will. Raheem Harris. One of the reasons why Loyola's future does look bright. Four freshmen that will really help this program in the next few years. But they get Georgia Tech on Saturday on ESPN. Good doesn't step. get any easier for them. Good step for Yeah, not an easy one, particularly after that great win over Georgia. Huh? Scott answers. 122-114. Pugh is fouled by Christian Scott. Again, a reminder, boxing coming up. Barry Tompkins and Al Bernstein. Top rank boxing coming your way. John Saunders will put a cap on college basketball before we proceed to the boxing. The boxing coming to you live from Las Vegas. Now there is no place like home, the Depth Dome. This is a program that in 1972 was absolutely nowhere. After Pete Maravich left, basketball again on the back page. But Dale Brown resurrected it. I don't know if you know this Christian Scott there. A nice little sportsmanship to Pew. He fouled and went over. And they had played a very physical game. A lot of banging and pushing, so uh, emotions controlled. Well, you survived. <laughs> I mean, not easy to explain all the fast pace. This was this one not a game for X's and O's, <laughs> but certainly a game for offense and some flashy play on the defensive end from time to time. We saw a little of everything fast, tonight. Fast break layup drills, huh? <laughs> on occasion. All right, we're going to do a fast break out of here. Give it to John Saunders. He'll slow the pace down just for a brief moment before we get to boxing. For Bill Raftery, I'm Jim Brando. So long. <laughs>